we've been talking about these one can experiments that you're going to run. Now, when we put those together, we'll be cascaded, and then we have our two can system model. And so let's end with this. Let's discuss um, that final model. And I, I, I hope you can see now we need two state equations, one for each can, for it to form the two can system. Um, basically, all we do is is apply continuity right on the second can. Right, now you got the volume Q1 from the bottom, which uh, is is this term here uh, coming into the bottom can. So the rate of change of volume in the second can, right, is just the flow coming out of the top can less the one that's leaving the bottom can. So convince yourself that this model makes sense to you, right? Uh, each of these k values now labeled one and two are for the top and bottom cans and those are the values that you need to find experimentally right and um, while it's possible to solve one of these can systems by themselves this is the top can uh, note how the top can doesn't depend on volume two right because uh, you don't have flow going back uh, back up into from from two to one but unlike the one can system model it, there's no way uh, to easily solve in closed form a solution for this system. We need to uh, run numerical simulations, right? And so uh, that's one of the things that you'll need to do for pre-lab now that you've got some experience building simulations and we're using LabVIEW for that. Um, you've done that in previous labs. Uh, now you'll build a simulation model for this system. and. Uh, and I'll discuss that a little bit in a pre-lab uh, video. Uh, but uh, we need initial conditions, uh, and uh, we need uh, these coefficients, just two coefficients. And um, I'm, I'm including this just to show you what that model might look like in pure block diagram form. All right, you have Qn on the top. You have Q1 being solved way over here. It's coming back. So you have Qn minus Q1, and that gives you V.1. You integrate that guy. I have this to represent that, that part where you don't want, remember the output of this integral right here, that right there, this signal is V1. This says, right, the block is shown down here, whatever input this is, if, if that input, whatever that is, x, is less than 0, then the output should be 0. Otherwise, just pass that output, right? So, in other words, if V1 is less than 0, oh, then V1 is 0 because the can is empty. Otherwise, just pass V1. So that's that little nonlinear block. That's what that represents. Now, you can, you can actually do that with blocks in LabVIEW, um, or you can do that logically if you use a formula node to write your equations, okay? And then once you get V1 here, you take the square root, that's what this little block is, and then you multiply by K1, and that gives you K Q1. You pass Q1 also into the bottom equation, and you have basically a duplicate of this here, but now you have Q1 minus, I should have a negative sign here, right? Q1 minus Q2, and that gives you V.2, and you have the same path. So your simulation model should look something like this, right? And as I did before uh, with the uh, in the pendulum lab, show you what script notation might look like in case you want to use a formula node or a math script node in MATLAB. Uh, and this is what I was talking about. So if you had these equations right, this is a little logic that you could use. If if v1 is less than zero, then q1 equals zero, right? That means if you, that the volume has gone less than volume one has gone less than zero. Otherwise, q1 is just that equation that we that we like so much and likewise for v2 you do the same thing and then here this f here just forms those two equations very simply minus q1 and q1 minus q2 right very compact notation right what's nice about script sometimes now let's talk about okay what are you going to do with that uh, experimentally test this so testing with a with with the one can model you could you you know let's say you have a k value for each can. You, you could um, run tests and determine you know how accurately is is uh, is the can emptying correlating 
uh, to say your predict predictions, right? You're going to have a direct relation from your data, so that seems to be pretty easy, but you may also want to look at that. If you're making pressure measurements, for example, do your pressure measurements correlate for, for level, correlate nicely with your simulation? Um, and then the toucan model, again, a quick test is, is just, you know, once you have your two, put, put a, give a known initial volume at the top, empty at the bottom, run your tests and, and, and check when to certain peak values. See if you're, um, you know, in, now you have pressure sensors mounted on there, you can actually check and see how well it correlates. So that means that you, you may want to have uh, instrument, virtual instrument built in LabVIEW where it, it's running a simulation at the same time that it's taking data. And you've done this before, again, in a previous lab with the pendulum. And uh, that's one way to test it. But again, we're going to talk about the filling experiment um, of the bottom can. And that's, that's the key assessment that's going to be used to, to determine how accurate is your model. Um, and that means, again, that you have to have flow coefficients for both of the cans. And also, you need to you know, accurately put in that volume. That volume, where do you get that value? And uh, the way we propose you find that initial volume is, is, is from your simulation. So you can you know what, what peak volume you need in the bottom can. And you can, by brute force, put in initial volumes in the top can, run it iteratively until you actually you know, exactly get the, 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 the maximum volume in the, in, in the bottom can that, that you're trying to achieve. Right? So that's one way to solve for that. There's other ways that, that I won't discuss here, but that's one way to do that. So in closing, again, um, the one and two can systems, you know, rely on physical modeling, hydraulic systems. So it's a good review of that, and also applying state-space things that you're learning in your dynamic systems class. Uh, again, these are nonlinear systems that we have to solve. We put them in state-space form. It's convenient for our simulation approaches. Each can requires its own k-value, and I'll try to show you that. Uh, um, we can we can determine these experimentally. You could again get ideal k's, and then the appendix describes how you can calculate those. You can try to see how accurately those might um, predict, say, you know, times to empty and so on, um, to determine whether th that's actually a, a good way to do it. And uh, as I said already, you, you need a simulation program to, to solve for both states. And the key test that you're going to do, again, we're, we're going to test our model using the bottom can filling. That's, that's the key. It's the video I showed at the very beginning. Um, um, if, if we were doing control, of course, we could use sensors to do that. Uh, we're not, this is not a control experiment. We're, we're trying to control how we fill up the bottom can purely by uh, using a model basis, and uh, it's a it's a direct test on on how accurate your model has been developed. Right. So again, in a separate uh, video, I'll discuss a little bit about the pre lab requirements and also show you uh, how to get started on your on your two can simulation for pre lab. Have fun in the lab.